and gentlemen, I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein and this is Vehicle Versions. We are finally back in sunny Southern California after what feels like a month of traveling. Well, basically it has been. If you've missed the last couple of videos, make sure to tune in. We drove a Polaris slingshot all the way across Maui, which was insane. Then we headed to England for the Goodwood Festival of Speed, drove the Bentley Continental GT, saw the new Bentley EXP 100 GT concept, which blew my my mind. Then we flew to New York City, went to a Formula E race, checked out Manhattan Motor Cars, drove a Huracan Evo, which was fantastic. The review is already live on that if you haven't checked it out. And now we are back home for, well, only like a day. I think I'm going to Las Vegas because I really want to go to Spring Mountain. My friend invited me out there. That track is supposedly insane and drive the 600 LT for the first time on the track. But before we head out, I gotta give a special shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Honey. Honey is actually genius, guys. It's a free tool that you download for your computer's browser. As you're shopping online, Honey scans the internet for the best coupon codes and discounts and automatically applies the one with the largest savings to your cart at checkout like magic. It works on 20,000 plus sites like eBay, Amazon, Auto Parts Warehouse, Walmart, and more. Honey is also super easy to install. You go to joinhoney.com slash vehiclevergence, click add honey, click install, and boom, you're done. Let's say I need a car cover for one of my cars, right? Let's add this to cart, $263. Honey pops up, coupon codes found, and boom, just like that, I saved $39. Instead of taking my word for it, let's see what other Honey users have to say about it. I freaking love using Honey for online discounts I never knew existed. If you order stuff regularly without using Honey, you're actually throwing money away. I completely agree. It turns out Honey has actually saved you subscribers of vehicle versions an average of $69.34 each. That's pretty epic. Look, there's no reason not to start using Honey today. It's free to use, easy to install in just two clicks. And don't just take it from me, take it from other Honey users. So get Honey for free now at joinhoney.com slash vehiclevergence. That's joinhoney.com slash vehiclevergence. Let's get on to the video. So today is going to be interesting. My friend bought a BMW i3 to replace his current daily driver. He's got a beautiful E46 M3 CSL absolutely gorgeous. Josh, you've seen him in videos before, but his daily driver was this $1,500 Hyundai. Uh, it was a beater car that he had just to save some money. It was actually kind of fun to mob around in. It got pretty good fuel economy, and since nobody cared about the car, since it was $1,500, it was actually a lot of fun. But now it is time for an upgrade. The only issue is the i3 is down in San Diego. He got an insane deal on the car. These have depreciated so heavily. Well, I'm not a huge fan of the exterior appearance of the i3, I do like the way the inside looks. And for short commutes like he does to work, an electric car does kind of make sense. So I have decided to take Take the 720S on a road trip down to San Diego and back in one day, which is going to be about eight hours of driving. I really want to see what the 720S is like on long road trips. I've done a decent road trip before. I've driven it for about three or four hours in one day, but this is going to be a whole nother level. Bumper to bumper traffic, freeway cruising. So I want to see what's the range of the gas tank because at full tilt, uh, mobbing around the canyons, obviously it doesn't get good fuel economy whatsoever in those conditions. But for people who are driving it more normally, I'm curious, what's the range on the car? Is my back going to absolutely kill me? And is this a car that you could actually commute super long distances every single day? I think the answer is yes, but we're going to put that to the test. Now, one thing to note, this is a performance spec car. So we've got the carbon fiber racing buckets, which are manually adjustable instead of the sports seats, which have electronic adjustment. They're also so heated, they have memory, and they're a lot more comfortable than these. Honestly, I think the carbon fiber racing seats in this car are less comfortable than the center seats on the 600 LT for my lower back. But just in case this was just suggestion, we brought a pillow. Right, guys filling up the mclaren now comment down below what you think the average fuel economy for the 300 mile journey is going to be i honestly have no idea my guess is around 16 miles per gallon but i guess we'll find out interestingly enough almost every single high-end european car has the gas tank on the right side but on the mclaren it's on the left all right time to reset this trip all right the trip counter is reset let's see how it does putting everything into comfort mode for maximum efficiency 
Cruising on the freeway in the 720S Spider is unbelievably comfortable. In comfort mode, the suspension soaks up bumps very, very well, and it's actually almost deceptively quiet in here. The exhaust valves are closed, and you really don't hear much engine noise whatsoever. And then, of course, you put it into track mode, you put that rear window down, and everything gets woken back up. Let's see about these seats, though, over the long haul. Just picked up Josh. What's going on, dude? I'm stoked for you. Are you excited for this? Yeah, man. I'm getting excited. How how did you come to determine you wanted an i3? Um, I just want an electric car. I already got the E46 M3, so I just thought, you know, might as well get a nice daily. Yeah. Sweet. So we're on our three-hour trip to San Diego. So far, so good. My back's hurting a little bit. What do you think of the seats? You're pretty tall. Yeah, I mean, it's just like that one little bottom part of the seat just gives you kind of lower back pain. It's interesting, the lower part of the seat where your lower back is tilts inwards, which causes your hips to tilt backwards, which I'm not really a fan of. If I were to get a 720S, I would definitely get the sports seats instead of the carbon race seats. They have more adjustability as well. It is gonna be a long journey in this traffic. So I never use cars navigation systems, and this is a perfect example. McLaren's navigation is saying that we're gonna get there at five 515, but it clearly has no concept of LA traffic because both Waze and Google Maps say it's gonna take about an hour to two hours more than that to get to BMW San Diego. That bumper sticker is amazing. On a Prius, no less, with a bedazzled license plate. Good for you, dude. Just hit 2,000 miles in the 720S. All right, four hours later, we finally ended up at the BMW dealer. He's signing the paperwork for the i3 right now, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a news update for you guys because Lotus just came out with an insane hypercar. So for those of you who guessed, the car turned out to average 18.1 miles per gallon across the entire journey. That is actually really impressive considering the fact that the majority of it was in bumper to bumper traffic. All right, let's hop in. So seemingly out of nowhere, Lotus decides to come out with a hypercar. The British manufacturer that's known for their incredibly lightweight, really fun to drive, great handling cars that cost a third the price of Italian supercars has now decided to get into the game creating a full-fledged hypercar. Initially, when I heard rumors that they were coming out with a new car, I thought, wow, that's interesting. I don't know what the market would be like for a hypercar Lotus. But after seeing pictures and seeing the production figures, uh, the horsepower, the torque, uh, I'm absolutely blown away. So the car is known as the Lotus Evaya. It's all electric, all wheel drive, and it makes a production record. Most horsepower of any new car ever produced, 1,972 horsepower. That's significantly more than a Bugatti Chiron. That's double the horsepower of a LaFerrari. And because it's all electric, that's instant torque off the line. So you can imagine the acceleration is going to be pretty wild. Now they've given us some statistics for us. They're not saying the zero to 60 exactly. I imagine it's probably gonna be in the low two second range. They just say zero to 60 in under three seconds. Obviously it better be well under three seconds uh, given the amount of power that the car has. But get this, the zero to 186 mile an hour time, so the zero to 300 kilometers an hour, which now is becoming more and more the benchmark for these super, super fast cars. Zero to 60 doesn't really cut it anymore. Uh, zero to 200 kilometers an hour is probably a more typically announced time. But get this, it's able to do zero to 186 miles an hour in 8.6 seconds. To put that into perspective, the Bugatti Chiron is able to do zero to 186 miles an hour in 13.6 seconds. All electric cars seem to be the way of the future, and I imagine the next holy trinity like we had with the LaFerrari, the P1, and the 918 are all going to be fully electric cars. And I wonder at what point the acceleration is so severe that your typical very wealthy, successful business owner who buys one of these cars legitimately passes out behind the wheel. I mean, already this 720S can do the quarter mile in under 10 seconds, and it is almost at the level uh, that starts to make you feel like you're about to pass out. So something that can do zero to 186 in 8.6 seconds, whew, that's like, it's gotta be dangerous. So how much does it cost? 
$2.1 million. And in order to get one, you have to put down a $300,000 cash deposit. $2.1 million, I mean, cars are getting so expensive nowadays. I remember when the Bugatti Veyron came out and it was a million dollar car, everyone freaked. At this point, you just expect these hypercars to cost millions and millions of dollars. They're only making 130 of them, but I'm curious, with so many boutique manufacturers out there making hypercars now, we got the Pininfarina Batista, we got the Hennessy F5, we got the Remox C2, uh, and a bunch more manufacturers as well. Are there enough wealthy people who are willing to spend $2.1 million on a Lotus, given the fact that this is their first hypercar, first all-electric car? I guess we will find out. Almost as impressive as the car's acceleration is the Lotus Evaya's weight. Building an all-electric hypercar is a challenge because of packaging with the batteries, which are really heavy, the electric motor, so on and so forth. But through extensive uses of carbon fiber and newer battery technology, they're able to get the curb weight down to 3,700 pounds, which is lighter than an Aventador SV, and it has 2.5 times the power. That's gonna be so dang fast. Get this, charging time takes just 18 minutes. 12 minutes if you want to charge is just 80% of the way. Range 270 miles. Those are actually really impressive figures. You could actually drive it long distance. If they said, well, charging time's gonna take a few hours and it only has an all electric range of 100 miles, it's a lot more useless, but it's pretty epic. Lotus also says that the EV powertrain is liquid cooled, meaning it's able to do a full lap of the Nurburgring with no performance degradation. The same cannot be said for Tesla Model S's that have tried to run the Nurburgring and end up running significantly low on charge and thus reducing performance. I can't imagine how fast this car is going to be around the Nurburgring. The car uses a semi-active suspension that's bolted directly onto the tub. The suspension was supplied by Multimatic, which is a company that actually developed the Ford GT, so we know the suspension setup is going to be awesome. The carbon fiber tub was made by an Italian company that specializes in carbon fiber work, and it weighs just 276 pounds for the whole carbon fiber chassis. That is unreal. It's got a 2,000 kilowatt battery that's actually mounted behind you, and it's on display like you would imagine a high car V12 engine to be. Pretty cool that they're not actually trying to hide the powertrain, they're celebrating the fact that it is all electric. Apparently the top speed is north of 200 miles an hour, which is insane for electric motors. While we don't have downforce numbers at this time, the aerodynamic work of the Evaya is unbelievable. Using a three quarters Venturi solution, air flows through the body, which Lotus describes as a porous solution carved by air. You can see special attention was given to the aerodynamics of the car. Looks wise, the car is absolutely stunning. You can see some styling cues kind of borrowed from other manufacturers, but it is so hard to create a truly original design at this point that I feel like any car people are gonna say looks like others. The front looks a little bit Ferrari-esque, kind of F8 Tributo with the headlights, a little bit of Hennessy Venom F5 as well. Come around to the side, and it's got these massive gaping vents that allow airflow to pass through, creating downforce and improving aerodynamics. It looks absolutely awesome, and those massive tunnels actually lead to the back where air passes through the massive, gaping, open, hollow taillights, which is one of the coolest looking rear ends of any car that's been produced as of recently. Now on the side of the car, you notice it doesn't have any actual mirrors. That's because they use cameras that tuck into the bodywork and fold out from the sides that display on screens on the interior. Looks really cool. Come around to the back of the car, it's got an active wing, a menacing rear diffuser, and those open, hollow taillights are so dang cool. This car looks like a concept car from the future, but this is, of course, the production version of the vehicle. The crazy part is they've only been working on it for the last 20 months, and they already have a working prototype. The same cannot be said for many of the other hypercar manufacturers that appear to have kind of disappeared in the news recently. The interior of the car is wild. We have this massive floating central bridge for all of the center controls. We've got an F1 style steering wheel, carbon fiber everywhere. The seats have pads on them. They kind of look like the McLaren Senna. It's all about lightweight. It looks really airy in the cabin. And of course, it's driver focused. Lotus says that this is a car that's going to inspire confidence around turns like their 70 year history would suggest. 
but it's good to know that this isn't just a straight line speed, this isn't just a marketing exercise, it's actually going to be a competitive hypercar. So there you guys have it, the new Lotus Evaya hypercar set to go on sale and in production in late 2020. I can't wait to see these things on the road, hopefully get to review one. Here she is, Josh's new i3. What up, dude, congrats. Oh, it's locked. All right, zero to 10 mile an hour race against the 720. This might have a beat. Well, that's not bad, that's not bad. The interiors of these i3s are actually incredibly unique. Check out the front dash layout. We've got this floating screen in the middle of the dash, another tiny screen, and then the gear lever is the craziest design ever. I gotta say though, because it's all electric, the instant torque at low speeds, it actually feels pretty quick. And then the good thing is I was actually looking for more carpet for my house. So we'll just remove that uh, out of the I3 here. That's an interesting material. The one interesting part is it says we've got 114 miles of electric range and it's 150 miles to get home. So we'll see what happens. What does this do? <laughs> <laughs> An above loading glove box. That is interesting. <laughs> we turned on the AC and lost 10 miles instantly. All right, launch it. Ah! <laughs> Dude, this has got a massive front trunk. Look at that. That's smaller than the, it's as big as your hand. The keys kind of look like if someone took a normal BMW key and ran it over with the 7 Series. They're so flat and wide. All right, dude, first impressions on the car? This thing's gonna look sick slam. <laughs> You're gonna slam it? Hell yeah, I got some sprays coming. No way. Yeah. Actually, you know what? It's kind of fun. It's like driving around in a golf cart. It's, it's, yeah, it's like a, it's like it's a like joke. A BMW golf cart. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, after a short little drive in the BMW i3, my opinion of these cars is like completely changed. It's actually pretty fun. Look at that, it's even got suicide doors. We just need a uh, Rolls Royce badge and we're good. Yep. <laughs> this is actually pretty crazy. He's 6'2 and he's sitting comfortably. I'm 5'11 and I've got plenty of legroom and headroom in this tiny car. I like how they left the carbon fiber reinforced plastic chassis exposed. That's actually pretty cool. Well guys, this has been a long day. The 720S was shockingly comfortable over that long road trip. The seats aren't exactly my favorite, but you can get different seats and I'm sure it would make a heck of a difference. The car is so quiet, easy to drive, the steering's nice and light, the throttle and brakes are super easy, so over long trips your legs don't get tired whatsoever. Josh picked up the i3. We did a little news update on the new Lotus. I can't wait to see that car, seriously. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. Hey,